once upon a time there was a reckless hot air balloon. Recklessness can be an extremely scary trait. At best, it tends to indicate a lack of thought. At worst, something far more selfish. But the hot air balloon in our story did not have a wicked temperament, not at all. It was just willful, I guess. Some might say, willfulness isn't the nicest trait either, but I would have to willfully disagree with them. Anyway, the reckless hot air balloon happened to be available for hire in a remote Rocky Mountain dreamscape. The reason for balloon hire could have been anything. A corporate do to impress colleagues or clients. A romantic proposal that had been planned for years. If the hirer was lucky, one of the less unruly balloons would be available, and apart from the inevitable bump on landing, all would be pretty smooth sailing. But if the reckless hot air balloon was the only one available and had to be booked, the pilot always knew something unexpected was bound to happen. It always did. A lurch, a willful pull in the wrong direction, a rocket skywards rather than a gentle rising so that more than one man who was trying to propose had brought up his breakfast instead of an engagement ring. Hurling in your sweetheart's hair isn't the best start to a marriage, is it? And powerful men in corporate suits had been reduced to tearful panic attacks. The shame of it! Resignations had followed from a harmless balloon ride. Because whilst reckless and certainly out of the ordinary, Our hot air balloon truly intended no harm. That reckless balloon got a mind of its own. Even the most experienced pilot had started to believe that perhaps the balloon did have a personality and that it was as temperamental as a spoilt child. This meant that the balloon was taken out less and less and left packed away if at all possible, which meant that when it was allowed to pop out to play... It seemed as if it made up for lost time. All sorts of theories developed about the root of the problem, from imbalanced manufacture to dark spirit possessions. A lot of this theorising was essentially jokey, but that was only because the rides you took in that balloon felt like you were taking your life into your hands, so humour helped a little. The sad fact was no one ever thought to ask the balloon What might be the matter? Not one pilot dared to take it out alone and try to learn its traits. If they had done so, they would have learnt that this balloon was wired for acceleration in a way that the balloon itself found utterly terrifying. It was actually hypersensitive to shifting air currents and had something of a violent allergic reaction to them hence all the lurching and the bobbing about and shooting off in unexpected directions. And let's not mention the bird phobia. Reckless behaviour can be misjudged, even in hot air balloons. I guess there's a behavioural scale. One day, our reckless balloon's luck flipped. An older couple wished to celebrate their anniversary with their little yapping dog for company. Oh, that pup was a yapper. Our reckless hot air balloon happened to be the only one available for their big date. The pilot met the couple with champagne and plastic flutes. He'd crossed himself and put his underpants on backwards for luck, just in case. Everyone was safety briefed and harnessed, including the little dog, who'd done nothing but yap at full volume since arriving at the foot of the reckless balloon's basket. Shush, it's nothing to worry about. His attentive owner fussed him, trying to stop him doing a strange dance of spinning about, standing up on his back legs, and threatening to twist his harness into a noose. It'll be fine, darling, the owner said. The pilot bit back the words, well, we can hope. But the little yapping dog's behaviour had been misunderstood by his owner, because he had found a soulmate in the spirit of the hot air balloon and had known it instantly. Sometimes you do. Yes, the dog and the balloon were chatting along merrily 
about how each of them navigated the terrifying world they inhabited. If even a pigeon flies past, I have to find another air current, shared the hot air balloon. I know, the dog yapped. I'm sure our postman's evil. I can't rest until his energy's at least three streets away. I just can't. On and on the new pals chatted. The owners of the little dog tried to joke about all the yapping and decided to take it as a sign of enjoyment. Little did they know. But in truth, this approach was so that they could sink themselves into their champagne and rose-tinted memories, willfully oblivious. Some might say that isn't the nicest trait, but sometimes it's genius. It turned out on that particular day to be the smoothest ride for the reckless hot air balloon ever. Even the landing was more of a thud than a bump. It was the noisiest ride by some distance, but the pilot joked later that loss of an eardrum was better than loss of a right arm. When the time came, For the happy couple to leave the basket, the little dog dug himself deep into a corner. Not growling, he was lovely, but definitely, you might not believe me, shaking his head. Well, there's a no if ever I saw one. Ha ha, his owner got it. Sometimes messages do land well. He's never behaved quite like he has today, his owner apologised to the pilot. He's usually such a good boy, except with the postman. Everybody laughed then. The pilot, with relief that they were all still breathing and that the hot air balloon hadn't been the worst behaved for once. Nothing was budging the little dog. Not bribing, not scolding, nothing worked. He was as good as woven into the wicker, yapping again now, but with a subtly different tone those in the know. I'm not leaving you, the little dog was promising over and over to the deflating balloon that was breathily collapsing now in order to be stored away again, perhaps for months, perhaps forever. Please don't go. I like how I feel when you're near. Take me with you. It was breathing its last. Have you had a good time? The pilot ran his post-experience customer survey, short as it was, but for once he dared to ask it after a ride in this balloon. It was like it was made for you. Such an odd phrase to use. Even the pilot noticed it. He meant the day, the sky, the thermals, the lack of vomiting. That is when the real change of luck happened. Like a quick flip in the wind direction that only sailors and eagles and witches perceive. The owner of the little dog somehow heard all the messages that were hanging in the air, swirling with possibility. Sometimes you do. We'll take it. The balloon, the basket, everything. It is our 25th and the only way we'll get him back home by the looks of it. The owner nodded to the little dog who instantly stood up on his back legs and started spinning again. Yapping, of course, and definitely, although I doubt you'll believe me, flapping. So the strangest anniversary present ever was packed and shipped and came to rest over a frame shaped like a giant light bulb in one of the fields of its new owner's farm. The couple would look at it from their kitchen window and the view would ignite rose-tinted memories and champagne giggles. And their little dog, who spent his days merrily jumping in and out and in again of the reckless hot air balloons basket, never did yap again, not even at the postman. Because when you find a soul who happens to be wired your way, you could often change your mind about how fearful the world is around you. My tip? Stay willful until you find them, fully and truly you, however reckless that might seem.